<clears throat> thanks for all of you for coming today. It's nice to see so many of you here. Um, introduce myself. My name is Chris, um, Chris Tanner, and I am the Market Development Director for Aspirico. And today we're going to be looking at going digital with iPlanet. <clears throat> So hopefully you can all hear me okay. Uh, if you've got any questions as we go through the, the webinar, if you pop them into the, there should be a question uh, question box, chat box um, in your in your sort of, in, in your screen panel. So if you pop any questions in there and we'll come to them at the end and I'll be able to answer any questions that you have. So just um, to set out what we're gonna be talking about today. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to take a little look at the Digital Transformation Fund and what that is, um, a little introduction to Aspirico as a company, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, iPlanet and what iPlanet is as a system, um, and, and also what's quite important, I think, is the ethos, why we've built iPlanet the way we have, um, and that ethos of, of, of moving um, our record keeping and our support planning and our care planning to look at impacts over inputs, and I'll explain what that means. Then we'll get into a demonstration of some of the core functionality of the system. Um, and we'll have a look around some of those core options, the, 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 sorry, the, the core functions within the system itself um, and how that flows through that you would use on an everyday basis. And then that, towards the end, we'll just have a look at, our, uh, give you a little guide to how we support providers to implement systems, because I think that's just as important as the software itself. And also, once you've implemented and rolled out, what kind of help we and support that we offer as a client, um, from a client management point of view. At the end of the webinar, there'll be some contact details, but also once the webinar is finished, you'll get a short questionnaire, just three questions. Um, that, uh, and that will just cover off um, where you are, what your service is called, how many people you support, and we can also give you some indicative costing. So if you are looking to get funding from your ICS, et cetera, you'll have an idea of what the system might cost. <coughs> Excuse me. So the Digital Transformation Fund, um, some of you may be aware, some of you may not, it's related to the Department of Health and Social Care is aiming to get 80% of the social care sector digitized by April next year. It was originally 100%, but they've come back on that to 80. Um, but obviously, um, the, the target will be for the whole sector to go digital. The reason for this is A, because there are so many benefits to having a digital system over using paper systems. Um, your data is live, for example, um, interoperability with other systems. The creation of the integrated care systems means that um, you know, there'll be a lot of data exchanged between health, health services and social care settings, um, as well as efficiencies. You know, the, the, we did some analysis with a customer of ours recently, and you see the amount of money spent on paper and printing, you know, but also as soon as you print something else, print something out, it's out of date. Um, so there are many, many well-known reasons for going digital. Um, and the Department of Health and Social Care is aiming to push that along in the social care sector, which has sort of fallen behind a lot of sectors when you think about it. You know, even the, the little village shop where I live in the middle of Yorkshire have got digital systems in there, you know, and had them for years. Um, but there's been a long standing issue in social care due to funding, due to resource, and things like that. So, in order to support, support providers to make that leap to digitization, they've made £250 million available via the Digital Transformation Fund. So this fund is actually available to all CQC registered providers, um, and it's administered through the integrated care systems, which were created in July last year. Now, some of these ICSs have been reaching out already to certain providers, so some of you may have already had contact from your local ICS already. Some of you may not, and you will, you'll be hearing from them in the coming months, that's for sure. Um, but also it depends on the type of service that um, you're running as well. So a lot of the focus has been on older people services. So that focus, so you know, they may be prioritizing care homes, uh, residential care homes for older people, domiciliary care, but it does apply to all CQC registered services, like I said. So that includes autism and LD services, mental health services, 
intermediate care, physical disabilities and complex care services. Um, so everyone, you will be hearing from your integrated care system at some point, I'm sure. Some ICSs are further down the line than others. And also they're admin, they're, they're engaging with their providers in slightly different ways. So some that I've been working with are going by the local authorities. So I know, so for example, in West Yorkshire, that although the funding is coming via the ICS, it's actually the engagements going through Leeds Council, Bradford Council, Rachel Council, etc. In Lincolnshire, it's going through the Care Association. So there are different places, different ICSs are managing it differently, but the funding is all coming through the same source. So this funding will be applied, this funding is for um, care and support providers to implement a digital system um, that has been approved by what was NHSX. Um, iPlanet is one of those systems. Um, and once a provider has made that decision um, and you've got an idea of how much it's going to cost, you can then apply for funding through the various routes. And we can help you with that because we've been working with each of the ICSs for some time. So we know the contacts, we know the people who are managing these things. So if you've made your, made your selection on your system, we can support you in getting an idea of costs and then applying for that funding um, to get you up and running. So just to tell you a little bit about the company, um, Aspirico was founded um, back in 2006. So we've been around for a while now. And the, the idea behind it really was to facilitate change in the sector. So our CEO and founder um, had some experience of interacting with the uh, care and support system, the social care system directly, and found that systems and processes within it are built around the service and not around the person. And so that's what we set out to do with creating iPlanet. Since version one, we've developed the system um, in partnership with people who use it, so social care providers. And um, so we're now on version 6.6, six, um, and each development leap has been made in conjunction with people who use it, including service users, as well as staff and managers. Plus, we've been working with the CQC, with the NHS, with the PRSB as well, on building you know, each iteration of the, of the system. So today we work in the UK, Republic of Ireland, Australia and New Zealand. And that's really useful because we get some really good best practice from across the world that we can feed into the system that everyone can then benefit from. Um, and as well as that sort of um, that expertise and that best practice we get, uh, we've also got a lot of experience in our team. So our client management team are all from social care backgrounds. So the team that supports providers to roll out have actually all worked in a social care setting. Before I joined Aspirico, I worked in social care myself for 15 years, been a registered manager, a regional ops director, and I've done some project consultancy on turnaround, <clears throat> things like that. When one of our teams um, has managed older people's homes. We've got someone from a mental health background, someone from an intermediate care background. So there's a lot of knowledge and experience from your side of the fence. So we're not a team full of salesmen and a team full of techies. Um, and I think that really allows us to offer sort of gold standard level of service. We really sort of, you know, we don't just turn on your system and leave you to it. <laughs> there's a lot of support that goes with it. I'll explain a little bit about that at the end as well. And because of that background, we still very much a values-based organisation and our values, our Evita values as we call them, underpin everything that we do, our approach to client management, our approach to operations, even our approach to developing the system. All of our development is done in-house as well, so we don't, we haven't just bought up lots of companies and bolted them together um, and we don't off, uh, offshore any of the development work. Everything we develop in-house in response to what we uh, um, from the information we gather up from the sector and the people who are using it. So the system itself is <clears throat> it's a web native system, which means it's accessible from any internet enabled device. Um, it's built around a responsive web layout. So if you're using a tablet it, or a phone to access it, it means that it adjusts itself to look like and feel like an app. So it's nice and easy to use but you don't lose any of the data and you don't lose any of the configurability options as well. That if you have an app, obviously you're stuck with what's built into the app. <clears throat> so iPanet's a modular system. So 
It's made up of core modules. And these six modules you can see on screen now, looking at outcomes, plans, sort of access control, internal messaging, family and friends portal, and the media section. These are all available on both the staff guide, but also the personal and family portal. So the personal and family portal comes a standard within iPlanet. Um, so that means every service user is able to access their own records and family and friends are able to see. So you have to, so people can access, see the plans that have been agreed, see what outcomes are being worked on, um, see, and also able to communicate directly through messaging. And you can also add media. And we'll, I'll, I'll go through that in two sets when we look at the system itself. On top of that, there's a range, the, the, the other core modules, which are mainly for the staff side. <clears throat> so we've got integrated risk management, which is built into the support planning process. Um, in my own experience, we were, you know, you have these lovely personalised care plans and generic risk assessments. Within iPlanet, they're integrated and really specific. A range of dashboards and alerts, all your reporting, your KPIs, um, and obviously your record to keeping. In addition to those core modules that form the basis of every iPlanet system, are a range of optional modules. And the reason we've made them optional rather than just stick them all together is so that different size and different types of service can configure the iPlanet system that best suits their needs. So, you know, if you've only got one or two locations and you're a smaller service, you might not need certain elements. If you're running an older people service, you might not need the same parts of the system as a learning disability service, for example. So, <coughs> so we can discuss those options with you. But what we've been looking at today, the core elements that would be available under digital transformation funding, um, so that includes all of the core modules, but as part of this scheme, we're also going to be including support tasks and the calendar module as well, which is what we're going to have a look at today. So just before I get into the system, I think it's just worth explaining that the, the, we built iPlanet around the service user, around the person rather than the service, which is why iPlanet is used in very diverse range of settings. We didn't design it just for care homes. We didn't design it just for don care. We actually designed it around the person. So it's used in learning disability services, in autism services, in physical disability services, as well as older people services as well, because it's built around the person. Those fundamentals are there. And what we're trying to achieve with it, and we've got a lot of recognition for, is about trying to move the dial away from that sort of time and task approach and start looking at a system that we can actually measure impact over inputs. So what are we achieving rather than a list of tasks? So for the people supported, for service users, this means that if we focus on the impact, we're actually putting the person at the heart of their care, not just the needs that we've assessed. That's just the basic living, you know, that that just basically existing. It's not really, you know, it's not life. And if your record call, your record keeping actually starts becoming telling someone's stories rather than just a list of things that you've done. And then you can start building on people's potential over their assessed limitations that we think that, you know, we, the, if we start from a really risk averse approach, we you start off with limiting what people can achieve. For staff as well, it's really important, you know, it's all very well having a personalized care and support plan, but it's important to know why are you supporting someone like this? Why are you caring for someone in this way? Not just how you're going to do it. Um, and also it's, you know, how, my own background in social care, I used to get really frustrated with the way people perceive care work. Um, everyone knows what a nurse does because everyone's needed a nurse at some point. Everybody knows what a doctor does. But so many people don't understand what social care staff do. And they think it's just, you know, personal care and things like that. When actually, we, they make a real difference to people's lives every day. So if we start measuring the impacts over the inputs, then we can start evidencing that and celebrating our staff. For providers, it means we can really start um, demonstrating quality over quantity. And I've been doing some work with the CQC um, over the last year or so around, you know, the impact of digitization and how we can use it to actually start measuring the quality of your services, not just how many minutes you spent with someone, not what list of tasks you did. Actually, you made a real difference to somebody's life. Actually, we're, we're, you know, we're reducing people's needs and keeping them out of hospital and all these sorts of things, the real quality measures. For commissioners, and hopefully we can start influencing commissioning because 
it's about evidencing the value of your services over the costs. You know, you can say if you're if you define care and support just by how many minutes you spend and what that costs, then actually <clears throat> that doesn't take into consideration the value of that service of someone reconnecting with their family members, reconnecting with their community, being prevented from having to go to hospitals again, from achieving a goal, from starting a college course they've wanted to do for ages and things like that. That value is really important and we've got to make sure that we're measuring that, not just how many minutes we spend with somebody. And really for the whole sector, it's about moving to an idea of outcomes over tasks. <clears throat> So like I feel just as important, I think and there's a lot of feedback we've been getting at these events and obviously we're getting a lot of inquiries at the moment. So we tied, we as Burko always take a partnership approach when we're working with um, with providers when they're rolling out. So we, everybody is assigned a dedicated client manager from the start, that's the first thing. So that'll be your first point of call. And like I said at the beginning, that person will be from a social care background as well. So they'll understand what's happening. And, Best way, to, uh, best way to sort of support you through the process. Then we'll have a kickoff meeting and that will be to explain the process. We'll talk about the things that we need um, and what to expect and time frames and everything else. And then we will build your system. We'll incorporate your logo, we'll incorporate your location names, your job roles, and also we need list of your funding bodies because you'll need that for your PIR. And we'll also explain to you how to complete the spreadsheets for service users and your staff. It's the basic details that we upload into the system so that when you're when first day that you log in, everyone's in there and you can start building their plans and things. Once we've built your system, we will have a review, go through what it looks like, make sure everything that we've added is in the right place, and then we'll help you plan your rollout. So rolling out is quite flexible because it depends on your service you know your staff you know your service we'll provide you with step-by-step -step training videos and that's for your staff and managers so you can use them as and when you see fit normally sort of module by module so you might have a training video on how to leave a note and how to leave a log they might have a, another training video on uh support planning care planning the reason for that is so you can reuse them but also doing a whole day's worth of training on site is virtually impossible. Now you can't get everyone out of a rotor. I guarantee by 11 o'clock in the morning, everyone's forgotten what we told them at nine. So taking a little bite-sized step-by-step approach is the best way to get iPlanet or any system really, but to get the system adopted. Changing the system is one thing, changing culture is another thing. It takes a bit more work. We can also, uh, once you've gone through that training, we can also run um, implementation workshops around that as well to find out any niggles. Um, we can come down and do on-site training, like I said, if requested, our recommendation is that you go for the step-by-step -step, uh, approach and we'll support you the best way to do that and the best way to use that. Um, and we have regular, your client manager will have regular implementation follow-up meetings and regular usage reviews. Once you are rolled out, it carry, obviously you, you know, it carries on with the support. So. Your dedicated client manager will stay with you. We'll have regular usage reviews, steering meetings, making sure you're getting the best out of your system. We have a 24 hour support desk. That's the beauty of having a team in Australia as well. So it's an online portal. If you've got any sort of tickets you need to put through <coughs> for, for you know, minor things that you need um, checking. Um, we also have monthly best practice clinics. So these are monthly webinars for iPlanet users and we cover off it might be new functionality, it might be um, some secret buttons that you didn't know were there, uh, it might be you know, the be best way to write a support plan in iPlanet. So there's all, because we've got a lot of expertise in the team and these are really popular with um, people who use it. So every month when we cover off a different topic to make sure you're getting the best out of your system. There's also an online learning center, so you can, any iPlanet user, can log in and it's got little bite-sized videos in there. It's got all of the best practice clinics are in there, but also just little prompts, you know, little little tiny 30 second videos. Oh, you know, how do you leave a note or how, how do you save this or how do you log in? So, that, so you're not just left to it, you know, and also, you know, we regularly upgrade your system to make sure you've got all the latest functionality, normally every 12 to 18 months, but we always work with you on that. And I think that's really important to sort of bear in mind as well. So uh, we're reaching time now. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, 
everyone will get a recording um, of the webinar as well. I'll just edit out some of the little errors there as well. If you need any further information in the meantime, um, we have a new, our, our website is at spiroco.com. A brand new website has been launched for the next two days, which would be great. Or you can drop us an email at inquiry at spiroco.com. Following this webinar, when I close up, when we finish the webinar, you'll get a questionnaire with three questions, that, which will just be where you are, how many people you support, and what your service is called. That'll allow us to give you an indication of what, um, how, what the costs might look like as well. We're also going to be at the Care England conference, and uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter as well, keep up to date with all our latest news. So other than that, I'd just like to thank you very much for your time today, um, and uh, we will hopefully speak to you soon.